Do no. it again. Not recording? I'm recording now. Oh, it wasn't recording? No, don't worry about it. Oh. It's okay. So you got you managed to um, speak with some of, some of the people here. Who did you get to speak well, to? Well, first of all, I, f- I recorded for the first three hours of the sessions this morning. Yeah. And then I was nabbed by uh, the Hugh organiser, Hunt. Hugh Hunt. Yeah. He asked me to uh, not record for the rest of the, 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 whole, uh, the whole venue, <coughs> the whole... Uh, conference so uh, I said yeah I respected that no problem but anyhow we've been trying to get a couple of interviews on the little breaks in between the sessions with um, Jim Haywood and Dave yeah. Keaton all those guys so, uh, Jim Haywood what's he do? Jim Haywood is a uh, aeros- aerosol research manager at the Met Office okay Okay, and um, we asked him um, would he mind doing an interview uh, he said uh, I says on camera and he said uh, no I, w- I won't do it on camera he said but I will do an interview and I says oh come on man uh, just uh, do one for YouTube come on please and uh, he said no 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 uh, I don't want you to film me because you guys will just you guys will just try to catch me out he said <laughs> yeah, Ca- yeah. catch you out yeah so, catch so out. he's got he's, he's got He's got something to hide then. Yeah. Or he, he, Why would he say that? Yeah, to get Catch caught out. out. Yeah, so he could only get caught out if there was something he's hiding. Yeah. And because he's subjected to the Official Secrets Act, mm-hmm. obviously they're secrets they have to protect. Yeah. So, so okay, so that's the UK Met Office, and the yeah. UK Met Office they were are doing experiments in Ninmouth in 1952 yeah. in, for weather modification called Operation Cumulus, and. Um, it all went wrong and they killed 35 people and they denied it for 50 years until it became declassified. Yeah. And so we know that they do do things, quite serious operations where 35 people get killed because mm-hmm. they're mistakes and he's worried about being caught out. Yeah, uh, That's interesting, okay. Yeah. Um, so who else have you get, got to speak with? Uh, David Keith, I uh, got a, about um, two or three minutes with him. Um, just asked him about the sulfuric acid that he plans on releasing yeah uh, about his um, his uh, plans that he was talking about on the Colbert show yeah spraying millions of tons in the atmosphere uh, I read out a couple of um, health and safety um, uh, data facts from the uh, uh, health and safety fact sheets yeah. about sulfuric acid okay uh, just talking about uh, or- how it can cause organ failure skin irritation blindness and death yeah. so uh, I, was ca- I was kind of saying to him you know it's probably not a good idea to spray this stuff man <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This, is, this is sulfuric acid we're yeah, talking yeah. about isn't it yeah, yeah, yeah. okay and, it's, and then you so, tend to bu- build that layer up in the atmosphere yeah so yeah so he was quick to point out you know well he goes uh, he says uh, well there's already sulfuric acid in the atmosphere he says 50 million tons of the stuff up there it's one of the world's biggest killers yeah, yeah whatever if that's true it's whatever you know but uh, I oh, mean well, people why, are getting killed more? anyway so it doesn't exactly. matter if you get a few more killed yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we yeah. can live with it the risk is worth it yeah yeah it's okay because yeah. I mean how many do they really project would die from any changes due to global warming you know I mean I don't really hear them ever talking about the option to ride it out and we'll just adapt yeah I don't really ever yeah. see them licking that as an option yeah. it's, it's always or they don't talk about how warm is good they don't talk about humanity yeah. flourishing in warm periods like we did in the past like yeah. in the medieval warm period yeah. or the Roman age yeah, or the yeah, Egyptian yeah. age it's ridiculous you know and they, they never talk about that and it's a strange thing because if it was warmer there's more CO2 plants will grow better yeah right so we don't need to have weed killer and we don't exactly. need to have GMO foods because exactly. Organic food would grow CO2 much better. CO2 is good. I mean, uh, big, big uh, agricultural uh, organisations use, the, in green tunnels, they use the CO2 generators. Yeah, they need yeah. more CO2 because the, the atmosphere is currently starving from, uh, yeah. from lack of CO2. Yeah. We're, yeah. At, we're at a very low level of yeah. CO2 in the air. Oh, no, 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 apparently we're at a very high level, according to Yeah, you. yeah, I know, but it's, it's <laughs> only 400 parts per million, which is yeah. very low. Yeah. It's dangerously low, yeah. apparently, according to some of the, the, uh, the uh, top scientists. Well, I, I scientists. talked to Jim Haywood myself as well, and um, I happened to be talking about contrails being used for weather modification, mm-hmm. paper from 1970, and he was interested in that, but he said, oh, did you look at the IPCC report on aircraft yeah. and their effect on the climate, saying it's very, very minuscule. Yeah. Well, you know, I said to him, well, hang on a moment, all the clouds that I see on a daily basis, yeah. I said, how many times do you think I should see a contrail? Yeah. Yeah. And he said, oh, it could be quite common these days. Yeah. And I said, well, I did a photo set of four years of pictures every single day, on average, 300 days a year we yeah. see contrails yeah. and he was like oh that does sound like quite a lot yeah. actually yeah. you know and it's like well hang on a minute it's making clouds it's yeah. blocking out the sun yeah. it's affecting the climate it's seeding exactly. other and clouds below it 
I got Christmas Jim Haywood ball. actually to, to, to admit, to acknowledge that the contrails are actually changing the climate. We were talking about NASA images, myself and Harry, yeah. that we see on a daily basis. Yeah. Not only the observational evidence when we look up from the ground, but when we look down at, at with NASA. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's just like, man, there's just like the whole of Europe is blocked out some days yeah. with trails, only trails, yeah. nothing else, no natural cloud. Yeah. So I explained this to, to Nick Haywood, uh, Nick, uh, Jim Haywood, yeah. and he, he, he acknowledged that. And he says, yeah, well, they are changing the climate, yeah. So I says, well, look at... Let's say that it is innocuous water vapour that's coming out of these planes, whether, whatever, it say it's water, water vapour, I says we, we've got a big problem here because this stuff is blocking out the sun already. So therefore we, we would have to acknowledge the fact that solar radiation management is already taking place, yeah. whether it's intentional or unintentional, yeah. it's still taking place. Yeah. But they, they will say that these programmes are only proposed for the future. Yeah. Then they deny that they're going on, but they're going on every day. It's, yeah. it's just ridiculous to say yeah. that... When's the last on. time we had a cloudless day? I don't remember. I made a video um, uh, on my YouTube channel, 365 days of climate engineering over UK and Ireland. Not one clear day. Every day, trails, harp yeah. activity, EMF frequencies, yeah. just, it's crazy. Yeah. Every day, the climate is just engineered every day and you can see it. It's yeah. as plain as the bloody nose on our face, man. But it's just deny, deny, deny with these people exactly. in here, man. Exactly. It's just, they are paid liars. They are good at what to do. They're yeah. brilliant yeah. at what yeah. to do. Yeah. Do you know? Uh, some of them are well-meaning. A lot of them are psychopathic. We've seen a lot of them in action, you know. Um, well, the thing is, the, the, the types of changes they're ultimately talking about bringing in is going to be, um, it will, it will totally transform the, the whole planet. Yeah. You know, um, the way society will have to live to adapt to the changes to yeah. a carbon zero yeah. uh, society. It has phenomenal change. You imagine a carbon zero society means no wood burning, no car driving, no bus riding unless it's uh, uh, electric or something like this. Yeah. And how do you get the electricity? Is that from uh, a carbon yeah. source? So they're going to get rid of all, all uh, carbon. They're going to sequester it all. Dave Keat Dave no. is going to have the right to the bloody carbon dioxide on the planet. He's going to own it all or whatever. Yeah. And then, like, yeah. he gets it below 150 parts per million that's the end of life on earth you know because yeah, plants need it yeah it's a, it's a vital vital thing. And, they, and they're demonizing it trying to make it out to be a pollutant they have to demonize everything they demonize all things good man they invert reality man they demonize all things things good yeah. and uh that's just ri okay. ridiculous they, they just they just they just bend reality they say left is right and up is down and black is white man yeah. they just deny 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 and that's how they're getting away with it yeah. but the, um I, I, I don't think they're as comfortable as they used to be. No. With a no, I, th I think that um, they're, they're definitely getting agitated. I tried to speak to Ken Caldera. I asked him, "Can can we have a moment to discuss our concerns? Can we can we actually have a discussion about this?" And he reacted in. Um, in, in, a, in a very erratic way. He was like, no, 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 I'm not speaking to you. You call me a liar or whatever, which I hadn't. I said, um, I think you might be confused. I, don't, I, I, wouldn't, I haven't done that. And then he, then he basically, he backtracked a little bit, apologised to me for being so irate with me. And then in, afterwards, I said, well, you know, it would be a great idea if we could actually put our cards on the table and let's meet halfway and, and try and allay our fears, you know, and, and yeah. let's work through this. And he said, no, I'm not talking to any Ken trailers anymore. He started to say how he's been threatened and yeah. stuff like that yeah. and I think that they're feeling the pressure yeah. and it's not just the pressure of people feeling passionate about this it's the fact we're doing our research and we're getting closer and closer to revealing that maybe the weather and climate modification programs of the 60s which were quite widely developed when you had President JFK talking about let's do climate uh, uh, let's control the weather basically yeah. and Lyndon Johnson and Eisenhower they all said let's control the weather yeah. so those programs didn't just disappear they didn't stop but they did change a little bit when the NMOD treaty came in, yeah. and now the focus is on controlling the weather. They call yeah. it climate intervention yeah. or climate engineering yeah. or geoengineering, yeah. but in response for a reasonable um, problem, yeah. which is the anthropogenic global warming yeah. scare. Yeah. But it's still the same program yeah. about controlling the weather yeah. and the climate. And what do you get and if you control the weather and climate? Control you control the hydrological uh, cycles, yeah. you control water supply to nations, you control food supplies, seeds. and then you control nations and you control all people. So the closer we get to the realization of yeah. what it's all about, yeah. the bigger picture moving it on to Agenda 21, yeah. sustainable development, and the control of the corporations with the public yeah. partnership, uh, public-private partnership, they're getting nervous because they can see we know what the yeah. end game is. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what's really got them Because yeah. they're a part of it. Yeah. And I think, you know, um, why, why is weather modification so secretive? You know, like there's, there's, there's hundreds of companies, as you know, um, that, yeah. that, 
that are in business daily, like, like you know, the Beijing on, Olympics. Yeah. You know, we we we'll, we won't have it raining on our Beijing Olympics because yeah, yeah. we're the geoengineers guy. Yeah. Why are people only finding out about this stuff in the last few years? I never heard about. You know, I I, 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 yeah, yeah. Exactly, I never yeah. I never knew that it was possible for mankind to manipulate the weather until about five years ago. Yeah. Never yeah, heard yeah. the like of it. Yeah. Why yeah. didn't I hear that ever, man? No. You know, I used to look at TV all the time. You know, I'd always I was, you know, pretty worldly I would have known what's going on you know but why is it so secretive yeah. you know why? Yeah. why 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 all the secrecy they've been doing this man you know you've talked well, about so, this uh, stuff uh, before yeah. like in the Napoleonic Wars and all yes. they, they realised yeah. that there was heavy uh, deluges of rain falling yeah. after oh, all the, the, all the, all the, the particles all the sulphur particles yeah. from yeah. the explosions same in the American uh, Civil War same thing was reported yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah you know so well, they've been developing it big time and they were doing it during the Second World War yeah I found out now they've been doing and it during the Second World War you know exactly uh, 17 what was it, 72? The Bavarian Academy of Sciences. 1772, yeah, offered yeah. Offered a prize for the best ideas on how to modify the weather. Yes. That's how long yeah, that's the, a, yeah, this, yeah. this, 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 goal, this goal to yeah. control the weather is. Yeah. So it's ridiculous. I mean, these guys to say, I mean, Alan Robach at the, at the Berlin conference said that rain um, rain making is not possible. Artificial yeah. rain enhancement is not possible. It's a nonsense, yeah. That's why they had the NMOD treaty, because they yeah. realised they could, uh, with Project Popeye, yeah. they extended the monsoon season by up 60 days. Yeah. And when that, when that first came out and they addressed it in Congress, um, they totally denied there was any programme. And it wasn't until a serious whistleblower from the programme came forward mm -hmm. and the pressure from Senator Claiborne Pell, yes. um, without that kind of pressure, they still would have denied it was going on, but yeah. it got blown up and, and blown out of, uh, you know, it, the lies were, were blown out. So they had to respond and the Russians put pressure on them to have the NMOD treaty, the Environmental Modification yeah. Treaty, which prohibits the use of weather modification as a weapon, as a weapon yeah. but it doesn't prohibit weather modification, weather modification yeah, yeah, yeah. for domestic purposes exactly. or yeah, even yeah. for commercial purposes. That's their loophole, isn't it? Because it's a very deceptive uh, um, uh, treaty. You know, people yeah. uh, just looking at it think, oh, th oh, this means this is the end of weather modification. Oh, we can all just go back to sleep now. Yeah. But that's that wasn't the case. No, but it did go quiet and it started yeah, yeah. to change and shift yeah, yeah. from weather and climate control yeah. into climate engineering yeah. or climate problems, developing the problem, getting, oh, let's set up the IPCC, let's yeah. let's generate this whole thing that there's a CO2 issue creating warming, let's, let's focus on that, and then we can use weather and climate modification control methods again yeah. that we were developing earlier, but for a legitimate reason. Now yeah. the reason is to save the world. Yeah, exactly. Because many people wouldn't have wanted this before, yeah. because there'd be winners and losers, yeah, and who's yeah, yeah. controlling it, who's, who's, who's the one that's got the finger on the pulse? Who's yeah. the one that's going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah okay, um, we'll control your weather today? Or, yeah. you know, because if you control the weather in one location, yeah. by proxy, yeah. you're going to affect the weather in another location. Exactly. And that was said by Edward Teller in 1958, saying that um, it now seems clear that we can control the weather. And uh, the concern is if you control the weather in one location, yeah. you will affect but it somewhere But these guys else. will argue, these climate scientists will argue that weather modification does not affect the global climate. But I mean, that's ridiculous. What is going one on weather, all over the globe? One weather modification program, even one weather modification is going to have a butterfly effect on the other side of the world. Well, the, the, but, yes. but that's only one, but there's hundreds going on every yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. So the, no. earth, the climate the, has been engineered, whether the, they want to... If know, they want to agree to that, yeah. if they, they would like to admit that, bait. don't they? they yeah. No, it doesn't work, so we won't even include yeah. that in our models. Yeah. But you know why they can't include it in the models? Yeah. Because there are so many different programs going on all the time, you couldn't yeah. reliably input the data. I asked Jim Haywood, actually, that. I said, can you detect uh, from the off a supercomputer, can you detect what's natural and what's unnatural weather? Can you differentiate between the two? And he said, well, no, we don't pick up weather modification programs. And I said, Do you, so that means that you don't include it in your weather forecasting models? And he said, no. Well, it's wide scale. There are 42 yeah. nations, yeah. according to the World Meteorological exactly. Organization from the United exactly. Nations. 42 nations with full-time yeah. weather modification yeah. programs. Plus, many other nations have uh, maybe not full-time weather modifications. Plus, they don't yeah. even include all the commercial activity, and, and it's countless. Yeah. So, we've just got a couple of sec a couple of minutes left. Should we wrap it up there? And hopefully, we'll get yeah. um, maybe when I was speaking with David Keith three weeks ago in San Francisco, I asked him for a public roundtable discussion, yeah. and he agreed at that time. But it's judging TV. by the, the reaction we're getting from them yeah. here, maybe he won't be so forthcoming. Well, one of the guys there, a friend of his, just there was telling us later on at the time, you know, a couple of drinks, maybe have a, a quick really? chat. And he might, yeah, he might, he might loosen up and divulge something to us or whatever. Well, we don't, we, what we're interested 
interested in is like the weather modification and climate modification may be going on and in a nutshell that's climate engineering yeah. and the thing is it may be creating a problem exacerbating problems or it may be being used for nefarious activities to create this one world government system mm -hmm. globalization global yeah. response global governance mm -hmm. and all that and the thing is ultimately what are those plans where they're going to lead it's not a nice place no. we don't like it we don't want a bit and the question is does he want it yeah does he know where it's going? Does David he want Keith, that? Does he, does he want to live in a world? Does we've he want to live, live in a world with sulfuric acid raining down? And he says, no. He says, uh,